I've had to remove my hot end gantry uh, because I needed to modify it. And it's a bit awkward to see around it when it's um, when it's on the machine. Can't sort of see around the back. Um, particularly now I've put the printer in a booth. Uh, it's difficult for me to get a camera in there. So I thought, as I've got it off the machine, now might be a good time to um, uh, show you guys uh, what it's all about, basically. So it's um, it's this beast. Um, so there it is. So this is how it is when it's on the machine. Um, so the, the, the printer was always built um, with the intention of using a, a mixing hot end which are, are big and heavy um, so I've always had these uh, twin rails with the, um, the hot end effectively kind of slung in between them. Uh, printers all open builds um, stuff. So you can see the um, the wheels, um, top and bottom. Uh, there's an end on view. So I always use. Um, I always support the uh, the axles, for want of a better word, at both ends, uh, which is what I've got two plates, an inner and an outer. You can see the, here the, uh, the hot end, the, the, the parts that form the switch. So there's that brass plate on the bottom there, with one, which is one half of the switch. And then this brass bolt that's fixed on the, on the hot end mount, insulated from it because it's on a plastic part, uh, which forms the second half of the switch. So when when the bed comes up and presses on the nozzle like that causes the hot end to lift which breaks the contact so that's uh, that's why the hot end is also the probe so as soon as it comes off its seat it, it breaks the electrical contact and that's my Z home um, got two springs. Oh, the, the hot end kind of sits there. Its own weight holds it in place, but the, the springs assist it. If you do get a blob of plastic on the print, the hot end could kind of rise and run over it of its own volition. It's better to plow through it, so that's why the springs are there. So there you can see the the kinematic mount. Basically, this rod has got. Um, Kind of dimples in the end of it and then these um, spring-loaded plungers hold that rod in place so it forms a kind of a hinge uh, the zero play in X or Y um, but obviously it can rotate like that so to remove the hot end I take the springs off take that wire off Slacking off this lock nut. <coughs> Undo one of the plungers, doesn't matter which one. And then the hot end comes off. Um, so I've got uh, I've got three different hot ends. I've got this multi input one, I've got a single input one, and I've got a dual input one. They've all got the same arrangement with the rod and the and the bolt. And then, uh, so this little circuit board is just a bit of Vero board, uh, effectively with a, just a, um, a resistor and an LED. So when the, uh, when the circuit breaks, the LED flashes. Because normally, uh, when I home Z, although that lifts off the seat, you don't actually see any physical movement of the hot end, because it's a, just a tiny amount to break the seal, to, uh, to break the contact. Um, so having a, an LED that flashes is kind of a good visual indication that all's working as it should be. Belt attachment, the belts go through these slots 
one there and one there, upper and lower. Um, and then they basically fold. Uh, they fold around the plate and then underneath these these plates here um, one there and one there and so just tightening up those screws clamps the belt in place this tips the scales at about 770 grams the hot end that I've currently got is 340 grams so that's a total of 1110 grams of mass that I move in the X direction. I only ever use 6mm bolts, 6mm uh, belts, um, I haven't had a problem with them. Uh, a lot of people would think with that kind of mass you need at least 9mm, but it's not it's never been a problem to me. Um, likewise the attachment, I've never had any slippage or anything like that, simply clamping it in these slots like that. You can see the wheels a bit better in this shot as well. End stops, I've got two end stops. I've got um, X min and I've got X max. Um, and that's because I um, I have a joystick to jog the axes around um, because I have to keep the extruders in sync with the uh, with the hot end otherwise it will just pull the bowden tubes out. Um, and I often jog things around before I before I've honed the printer. So um, having a, a maximum end stop has uh, saved my bacon from time to time. Part cooling fans, um, I just use these little 30 mil blowers. Um, I've learned over the years that anything you put, <laughs> any kind of shroud or whatever that you make to direct the airflow just simply destroys the airflow. Um, so I don't have any kind of a shroud, they just blow lots of air. Um, generally they just tick over at about, you know, maximum of 20% speed for most things, but um, one thing with a, a mixing hot end that you can do is you can feed the same filament into all the inputs and effectively you've got multiple melt chambers. So you can print a very high flow rate and if ever you've tried with a 0.8 mil nozzle or bigger um, at quite relatively high speed, you know, 60 mil a second with a 0.8 nozzle, it puts out an awful lot of plastic, which takes an awful long time to cool. So you need a lot of cooling air when you run big nozzles. Uh, and these really blast air out. So these brackets on the slide, side allow me, I can slide the whole thing up and down and uh, then there's a grub screw on the back which I can undo and then I can actually rotate um, the fans around so I can get get it reasonably precise in in relation to the nozzle. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. I've also um, modified my purge bucket um, chute thing. Um, for, uh, for, for wiping and purging the nozzle. So I can have a look at that while I got the machine in bits. So the challenge with this is always trying to make something that uh, is in a fixed position relative to the nozzle, but at the same time it still allows the bed to rise and fall freely without any interference. Um, and also because I've got three different hot ends that I swap between, the, the nozzle position varies depending on which um, hot end I've got bolted on at the time. So I need to be able to adjust the height reasonably, uh, reasonably easily, uh, the height of the wiping strip at the back. So um, zoom in a little bit. So basically there's a plate bolted to the frame with a slot in it. Uh, and then there's a stud that's um, bolted to the back of the um, that rectangular chute, if you like. So um, it, it holds it in, a, in position um, in X and Y um, but it allows it to move up and down in a Z direction um, for when I change nozzle and I need to set the height. So there's the top and then um, there's the bed, excuse the mess and then at the bottom I've just got this. So I've got this basically as flat plate 
uh, which collects all the bits. So I'm going to put a, a lip around the edge of it. And then um, the bottom of the chute, for want of a better word. Um, so it's a so it's rectangular channel, hollow, hollow aluminium channel. Um, so that bolts down to the to the plate. Uh, there's slots in that block, so I can move it forward and backward and get it uh, keep it clear of the bed. And there are those thumb screw bolts that screw into the side of the thing, um, and then that uh, it's on a big slotted plate, so I can undo them and raise it or lower it fairly easily. So that's it, just a quick look at a couple of things while I've got the printer in bits. Um, oh, one other thing, I bought these um, couplings for my coolant, they're uh, self-sealing couplings. They'll make it easier when I um, swap hot ends, or take one out, hot end off or whatever. Um, I won't be spraying coolant all over the place like I do. What I quite like about them is that um, both parts seal. So when they're apart like that, both the male and the female bits are sealed. So I can put a male and a female on the flow and return, and then have a female and a male on each hot end, which means I only have to buy one fitting for each hot end. If I put two females on the top, then I'd have to have two males on the bottom, so I'd have to buy two fittings and only use half of it. Um, so they go together. They also make good party poppers. Till next time.